God, look. There's a leopard here. Why does it appear in people's crop fields? It looks so painful, what the hell is going on here? When it comes to the leopard, everyone is familiar with it. It is a powerful and ferocious wild animal. Relying on its super predation ability and extremely fast running speed, leopards have made countless animals frightened, and they dominate the place where they live, with almost no rivals. However, no matter how tough an animal is, there are times when it is in trouble. The so-called the tiger leaves the deep mountain and falls into the flat ground to be trapped, dogs can also bully tigers, and leopards become very vulnerable in front of traps. Look, this scene happened in a field in India. Unfortunately, a leopard was firmly entangled in a trap placed by a villager. Its legs were completely bitten by the trap. It lost the ability to break free, and could only let the trap bite deeper and deeper, and it could only fall to the ground in pain, howling constantly, hoping that someone could help it. Luckily, its howling helped. A villager who was farming in the field heard the wailing of animals, so he followed the sound and came to check. Seeing this, the villager was startled. He never thought it was a leopard. The strong fear made him want to run away. But when he saw the trap on the leopard's leg, coupled with such painful wails, his compassion for the leopard overcame the fear in his heart, so he decided to rescue the poor leopard. However, relying on his strength alone is absolutely not enough. He found a few fellow villagers and wanted them to help find a solution. With more and more villagers, the howling of the leopard became louder and louder. It seemed to be telling its own pain, and wanted these people to help him get out of the trap quickly. The leopard was anxious. And so were the villagers. But the villagers were honest and responsible, and no one had ever seen such a behemoth. Even if they wanted to help Hua Bao, they didn't know how to do it, and they got stuck together. At this time, a villager thought that he could call the nearby wildlife rescue center and let professional medical staff come to deal with it. So the villagers immediately called and explained the situation of the leopard to the medical staff. During the period of waiting for the medical staff, Hua Bao didn't know whether it was because of his serious injuries, or because he realized that someone would come to help him soon, so he became much calmer, and even the wailing gradually weakened. As the time passed, when everyone thought that the leopard was about to lose its hold, the medical staff drove up and let everyone present see the dawn of hope. At this time, hundreds of villagers had gathered around Hua Bao. When they saw the medical staff coming, they rushed forward to explain the situation. The scene was very chaotic. Faced with countless mouthfuls of descriptions. The villager who first discovered the leopard couldn't stand it anymore, so he shouted, Be quiet, let me talk. The scene was quiet, and he walked to the medical staff and told them, The leopard was caught in a trap, and it had been for a while, and its condition was very bad. After the medical staff learned about it, they also understood that it was urgent to rescue the leopard, so they moved a huge cage and wanted to let the leopard enter the cage so that it would be convenient to take it back to the rescue center. However, there is a huge difficulty in front of them. That is how to put the leopard into the cage. The leopard's movement is limited, and it is almost impossible to let it walk into the cage by itself. But in the face of such a large beast, I believe that everyone at the scene dare not act rashly, let alone lift it into the cage. What should I do? When everyone was at a loss, the leopard seemed to sense people's worries. It dragged its tired and weak body to stand up slowly, and walked into the cage step by step. This was beyond everyone's expectations. People did not expect that the ferocious and powerful leopard has such a docile side. This also makes people sigh at the spirituality of animals. The leopard obediently walked into the cage, 
which solved the most difficult problem. Everyone put the cage into the car together. As the rescue vehicle slowly drove away, the villagers finally felt relieved. They believed that the leopard would be fully rescued and that the leopard could return to nature. As the villagers expected, when the leopard was sent to the rescue center, the medical staff immediately checked its wound. And the medical staff found that the leopard's injury was far worse than people imagined. Because the traps are very sharp and the leopard has been held for too long, the traps have been deeply embedded in the leopard's legs, and some of them have even broken bones. What is even more worrying is that because it was summer and the weather was very hot, the leopard's wound had already shown signs of infection, which made the situation even more critical. In order to save the life of the leopard, the medical staff was about to race against the god of death. They did not dare to delay for a second and immediately operated on the leopard. During the operation, the leopard became very quiet under the anesthesia. It seemed to be asleep and not asleep. But what is certain is that it trusted the group of people and believed that the group of people were helping it. Finally, after two hours, the medical staff successfully removed the trap and treated the wound, and the next recovery depends on the leopard's own resistance. It must overcome the postoperative bacterial infection before it has the chance to return to nature. Fortunately, it did. Under the careful care and care of the medical staff, the leopard's body gradually began to recover. At first, it couldn't walk very well. And the injured leg could only be placed lightly on the ground, and it moved slowly by relying on the other three legs. But over time, it can move slowly on four legs. Later, it fully recovered and moved very quickly, which made all the medical staff very happy. A medical worker named Smith said, I am very relieved to see that this leopard is full of vitality from dying to now. This is inseparable from its tenacious vitality. We've prepared for the worst, but at this point, the idea is redundant. And Tina, another medical worker involved in the rescue, said, no one thought that it could recover so well. We helped it, and it defeated death. After another few months, the leopard has fully recovered. During this period, it ran freely on the grass in the rescue center. Thanks to the careful care of the medical staff, it seemed to be much stronger. But how can the grassland of the rescue center be compared with the vast land outside? The body of the leopard has fully met the standard of returning to nature, and it is time to say goodbye. Parting is painful. In the past few months, the medical staff have developed a deep relationship with Huabao. Huabao treats them without any hostility. Perhaps in Huabao's heart, he has long regarded these saviors as his own. Good friend. But wild animals must survive independently after all, they cannot rely on humans. Medical staff naturally understand this, Letting go is the best love for leopards. So, on a sunny day, the medical staff brought the leopard back to the place where it was injured. In order to prevent similar things from happening again. The local government has formulated guidelines for the use of traps, so that the land where leopards were injured has disappeared, and leopards can run as much as they want. Under the reluctant and blessed eyes of the medical staff. The leopard showed a vigorous figure and ran to the distance and nature. The reason why the world is so lively is because of the participation of animals. Animals are friends of human beings and bring spiritual comfort to human beings. Although they cannot speak, they must have words of gratitude. They are under the same roof as human beings, enjoying the warmth from the human world, and because of this, Treating animals kindly is treating yourself kindly. In this world, both people and animals know how to seek advantages and avoid disadvantages, 
but there will always be some unexpected situations. I'm going to tell you a story about a lynx that will definitely break people's stereotypes. On the verge of life, the lynx entrusted its young to a herdsman with whom it had a conflict. What happened to this lynx and this herdsman? Why did it give its child to this man? This was incredible. That's one thing that happened in the grasslands. The ancestors of the herders Caesar always lived there, mainly raising sheep for a living. Next to the pasture is the towering snow-capped mountains, and the water flowing from the snow-capped mountains flows on the pasture, making the scenery there beautiful, which is the environment that sheep like. Although such a suitable environment is preferred by sheep, there are some animals there that may be a threat to the sheep, such as wolves and lynx. Back then, packs of wolves always popped up, sometimes with just one wolf, but not long after there were many more. The wolves always appeared, and disappeared suddenly, just like the bandits under the mountain ran away after looting the sheep. Lynxes were the most annoying to Caesar, because lynxes always hunted lambs at night and took one lamb at a time. Caesar, who grew up there, was troubled by lynx stealing lambs at night. One night in April last year, Caesar hurried to the sheepfold to check on a sheep dog barking outside the pen. He saw the shepherd dog barking at the sheep from a distance, so he hurriedly looked into the sheepfold and saw that the lynx was holding a lamb by the neck. The little lamb died. Caesar roared angrily, yelling at the sheepdog and taking up the stick to attack the lynx in the sheepfold. When the lynx saw this, it was about to leave with the sheep in its mouth. But the lynx was far less nimble than the lynx Caesar had encountered before, and Caesar angrily looked at the lynx. He saw that the lynx belly seemed to be a little bigger, which calmed Caesar's mood. He knew then that the lynx was pregnant, so it wasn't as flexible. He thought that the lynx might be too hungry, so it came to steal the lamb from the sheepfold. Although he felt sorry for the lamb, he stopped the sheepdog that was about to attack the lynx, and watched the lynx leave with the dead lamb in its mouth. The lynx looked back at him deeply. In July, the weather turned warm and the plains were still cold. One day at noon, the sheep were all full and laying down on the grass to rest. At that time, the collie barked wildly. It turned out that three lynxes were walking towards Caesar's pasture in the distance. The mother lynx didn't seem to be afraid of the barking collie, but it still guarded the two cubs behind it, lest the collie could hurt them. When the lynx confronted the sheepdog, the two young lynx stalked towards a lamb that had broken away from the flock. At that time, you discovered the purpose of the little lynx, and ran frantically towards the little lamb. Soon the ewe protected the little lamb, but the little lynx had never hunted, so it wasn't afraid. Two little lynx ran towards the ewe and the lamb to attack them. However, just as a little lynx was about to attack, the ewe suddenly knocked it away. So the little lynx fell directly to the ground and whined, which angered the mother lynx. The female lynx nimbly avoided the sheepdog and bit the ewe's neck. Then with a crunch, the sheep was bitten by the female lynx and died immediately. Then the two little lynx came over, and the mother lynx tore off pieces of meat and fed it to the two little lynx. At that time the collie barked louder and kept staring at the female lynx, but the female lynx did not move at all, but continued to feed the two young lynxes. That's when Caesar finally arrived at the scene. After seeing such a situation, Caesar wanted to pick up the stick and wanted to attack, but in the end he didn't act. Caesar looked at the dead you and felt distressed, but he thought that these lynxes took a huge risk to go down the mountain to hunt for food, which means that there was no food on the mountain, so he left them after they were full. In May of that year, the grassy beach flourished, and all kinds of herbivores gathered there, including wolves, lynx, and brown bear carnivores. In the middle of the night, Caesar, who was resting, was awakened by the sound of scratching the door, 
and the sound of scratching the doors accompanied by a wolf howling, so Caesar woke up instantly. Some time ago, the shepherd dog guarding the sheep was killed by the wolves, so he did not have a housekeeping dog to warn him. Caesar hurriedly got up from the bed and took out a bucket, or something in the house to make a noise to scare the wolves away. The chaotic voices carried into the distance in the silent night, and then the howling of the wolves ceased. Caesar went out to check while tapping the bucket. He didn't see anything unusual, and then walked to the sheepfold. The sheep was sleeping peacefully at that time. After seeing nothing unusual, Caesar went back to the house to rest. But before he could fall asleep, the sound of scratching the door sounded again, and Caesar was completely drowsy, and picked up the bucket again to make a sound. He tapped for a while and then there was no movement outside the house, so Caesar came out of the house. But there was nothing outside, just a dark night sky and a bright moon. He walked to the sheepfold again, where the sheep were still sleeping peacefully, much to Caesar's confusion. He still didn't think much of it and went back to the house to lie down again, but he couldn't sleep. Caesar lay quietly in the room, listening to the sound from outside. He heard a wolf howl from time to time in the distance, and the chirping of grasshoppers on the grass. Perhaps it was the chirping of animals at night that reassured him, and he gradually fell asleep. However, he heard the sound of scratching the door again. After Caesar woke up, he quietly listened to the sound from outside the door. The voice was intermittent, seemed a little weak, and gradually weakened. As the voice grew weaker, Caesar heard a weak gasp. After hearing the sound, Caesar knew it wasn't a wolf, because wolves don't pant like that. Although he thought so, he did not let his guard down, because he knew that there were many dangerous animals at night. Even a wild yak might threaten his life. Caesar quietly got up and approached the door. He walked to the door with the stick and listened to the sound of gasping from outside. The gasping sound became weaker and weaker and was accompanied by a tender whimper, like the cry of a cub. He boldly thought of pushing the door, but he couldn't open it. Caesar pushed the door a little bit with a lot of strength and through the crack of the door he saw a furry body undulating and stained with blood. So he pushed the door hard again, and the furry body was pushed away. Finally Caesar pushed the door open and he walked out of the house. With a ray of moonlight, he could see clearly that it was a lynx blocking the door. The lynx was lying there, wounded and bleeding. Caesar walked over to the lynx, which struggled to get up but couldn't. It stared silently at Caesar, as if to say something to him. At that time, its eyes had lost its vigor, and its head was on the ground. There was no movement, and it was dead. At that time, Caesar heard the whining sound, and when he looked for the sound, he realized that there were two little lynx, beside the lynx licking the wound on its body. Caesar just didn't notice them. It turned out that the mother lynx was suddenly attacked by a pack of wolves when it was hunting in the mountains with its two young lynxes that night. Because the number of wolves was too large and the lynx was no match for the wolves. It also had two little lynxes, so it had no chance of winning. Mother's love was great. The female lynx escaped from the wolves with its two young lynx but the female lynx was seriously injured. Knowing that it was going to die, it came to the herdsman's house, but it was afraid that Caesar would hurt the little lynx, so it knocked on the door three times. After scratching the door for the first time, the mother lynx took the little lynx to hide and observe Caesar's actions. After hesitating, the lynx knocked on Caesar's door again, but it still couldn't make up its mind and just continued to observe Caesar. As it got weaker and weaker, it knew it had to make a decision. It staggered to the front of the house and scratched Caesar's door again. However, at that time it was unable to stand and spread directly to the ground. Caesar looked at the dead mother lynx, and then looked at the young lynx next to it. He knew that the mother lynx wanted to ask him for help before it died. In the end, 
Caesar picked up two young lynx, then raised them and finally released them into the forest. However, Caesar didn't understand why the mother lynx entrusted the young lynx to him. Maybe it's because Caesar didn't hurt the female lynx when it was pregnant, or maybe because Caesar didn't hurt the female lynx when it killed the ewe. Although the mother lynx tried Caesar several times, there was no doubt that it trusted Caesar, so it entrusted the young lynx to Caesar. Caesar did not live up to the trust of the mother lynx, raised the young lynx and released them into the forest. This is today's story. Click to subscribe for more interesting The night was silent. At that time, an aura of danger permeated the corner of a fence. An old man was nervous and staring at the opposite side, and not far from him stood a wolf. The wolf showed its fangs viciously and looked greedily at the old man. The old man's clothes were stained with blood, and he must have just been attacked by the wolf. The wolf was slowly preparing to kill the old man. Suddenly a white shadow flashed and the wolf fell to the ground and let out a painful wail, and the one who pounced on it was actually a snow leopard. The wolf was no match for the snow leopard, and it didn't take long for it to run away. The old man stood frozen in place, and the snow leopard did not chase the wolf, but turned to look at the old man. Then it left in silence. What did this snow leopard have to do with this old man? Why did it save the old man? Thomas was 60 years old and had been working in a highway service area for 10 years and his main job was to welcome pedestrians. Thomas ran a store and sold merchandise. At that time, the tourism industry in the area was growing well, with a high number of tourists due to the historical and special landscape. It was winter and Thomas was relaxed because there were few tourists. On the fourth day of the year, Thomas was sitting on a stool behind the store counter and looking out the window. The night before he had received a phone call from his daughter that they were coming to visit him. Suddenly a child called out for his grandfather, and Thomas heard him and got up immediately. His daughter asked him how he was doing, and lamented that he hadn't been able to rest and had worked harder since her mother had come home, but Thomas said he was used to it. Previously Thomas and his wife worked at the store and took turns guarding it, but the previous year his wife had fallen ill and gone home to recuperate. The time together was always short. Shortly after lunch, his daughter and grandson were leaving, Thomas' daughter asked him to take care of himself while they were going home, and Thomas responded to his daughter. After they left, Thomas sat alone in the house and sighed. He stood outside the door and watched them leave. By then their car had driven away, and Thomas walked along the road for a while to check the surrounding road conditions. Just as he was about to go home, he heard a faint barking sound, so Thomas leaned down and realized there was something there. Flowers and plants were planted on both sides of the highway, but it was winter and the food had dried up. Thomas saw a shadow in the grass, so he took a few more steps forward. When he came to a bush, he thought the sound came from there. So he peeled back the branches and a creature was staring at him, looking like an animal cub. It had black and white fur and looked at Thomas warily. Its teeth were small and pointed, and its mouth had a few white whiskers. Thomas thought it was cute and looked like a cat. But Thomas intuitively thought that it was not just a cat. After a closer look, he realized that it was different from a cat in many ways. He had often seen wild animals there, so he guessed that it might be a leopard. Just as Thomas was about to leave, the snow leopard screamed. Thomas looked at it in confusion and realized that its foot was injured. Thomas hesitated to save it. He looked at the leopard and the leopard had a pitiful look in its eyes. Thomas softened his heart and picked it up. The leopard was very good and stayed in Thomas' arms. Once in the bedroom, Thomas put it on the table while it looked around curiously. It felt unfamiliar with its surroundings. Thomas moved a chair and sat down, and put the bottle of medicine on the table. He looked at the snow leopard's wound, which was small but deep, when its foot was punctured. The blood stained the snow-white fur on its hind legs, a dark red. It was no longer bleeding from the wound. 
so Thomas did not need to stop the bleeding. The leopard could not walk properly, so it was lying on its back in the grass, and Thomas thought it might have stepped on something sharp. Suddenly the snow leopard screamed, and Thomas looked at it and smiled. It seemed to answer him that his guess was right. Thomas sprinkled the powder on the snow leopard's wounds, and the snow leopard shivered and endured the pain. When Thomas was done medicating it, he picked it up and examined its entire body to see if it was injured elsewhere. Fortunately, there were no injuries elsewhere, so Thomas placed the snow leopard on the table. Thomas told the snow leopard that his medicine was effective, and that he would apply it every day until it was cured. He thought the snow leopard needed to eat meat, so he took out a piece of meat and put it in front of it. The snow leopard had never eaten meat like that before, so it poured at it curiously, then went over and sniffed it. It grabbed a small portion and chewed it up. In a short time it finished all the meat, and then lay down on the table safely. Thomas petted it and smiled happily. After a month or so, the snow leopard gradually recovered. One day, the snow leopard was playing in the yard. Charles, who lived in the next house, told Thomas that he was back. Charles also worked in the service area, and Thomas lifted the curtain to meet his friend. Thomas and Charles worked together and they used to chat, drink tea and play chess. That year, Charles went home for a month's rest, and Thomas said hello to him, and just as Charles was about to ask him how he was doing, he saw this snow leopard, and asked Thomas if it was a snow leopard, and why it was there. Thomas said it had hurt its foot, and he brought it back. Charles asked if the snow leopard had recovered. Thomas said yes. Charles said that since the leopard had recovered, Thomas should release it because he was afraid it would hurt his guests. Thomas felt that Charles had a point, and although he couldn't part with the snow leopard, he felt it was time to release it. The next morning, Thomas carried the snow leopard to the place where he had found it. The snow leopard howled as it was put on the ground, tugging at Thomas' pants while Thomas broke its paws. The snow leopard looked at Thomas, who looked at the snow leopard and said that it was not the right place for it and told it to go home. The leopard seemed to know that Thomas wanted to leave it behind, so it had a sad look in its eyes and Thomas left without the snow leopard following him. Two years later, Thomas received a customer. The customer complimented him on the beauty of his photos, and Thomas thanked him. On a wall behind the cashier's desk were many landscape photos, some taken by Thomas and some given to Thomas by customers. Those pictures attracted a lot of tourists who would ask Thomas what those places were. Charles felt that photos would easily attract more visitors, so he wanted to prepare some photos as well. One night, Thomas was lying in bed when he suddenly felt that the window was not closed, so he got up to close it. However, the window was not pulled, and Thomas put on his clothes and intended to go outside to take a look. After going outside, he stood on a stone and stood on tiptoe before closing the window. Just as he was about to move the rock into place, he suddenly sensed danger. He slowly turned around and found that it was actually a wild wolf. The wild wolf kept looking at Thomas, who felt that he was in danger and did not know what to do. He thought he could not run away immediately, nor could he call for help, which would alarm the wild wolf. So he slowly stepped backwards, while the wild wolf was slowly approaching him. He crouched down, put the stone in front of him in a defensive position, and looked at the wild wolf. The wild wolf suddenly attacked, and Thomas was ready to hit the wild wolf's head with the stone, but he failed. The stone fell to the ground under the impact of the wild wolf. Thomas was scratched by the wild wolf, and the wild wolf stopped after one attack. Thomas had no tools and had to keep a close eye on the wild wolf. The wild wolf slowly approached and looked for the best direction to attack, and then it pounced again. In the nick of time, a snow leopard came forward and tackled the wild wolf to the ground, and bit the wild wolf snake viciously. The wild wolf struggled desperately, 
but it was no match for the leopard, and it soon lost. Thomas couldn't believe the scene and he realized that the snow leopard that came to his rescue was the one he picked up two years ago. After being rescued, he was very touched. He saved the snow leopard, and the snow leopard saved him, which shows that animals have true feelings too. That's today's story. Click subscribe for more interesting stories.